How we doing, church? Man, it's good to be here. Um, my name is Pastor Jordan. Um, I'm the worship pastor here. So I'm talking about worship, right? That's the way this works. Just kidding, I'm not. Before we move forward, I want to show you my family real quick. This is my wife, Morgan, my oldest son, Liam, my middle son, Noah, and this is Layton. And don't let the cuteness fool you. She is a firecracker. Um, we were, this is a true story. Last night we were coming back from uh, New York. Um, first of all, New York at Christmas time. Um, who's done it? Who's been, yeah, obviously all of you. I'm new here. Um, it was, it was pretty insane. It's, uh, it's a lot of people. So our stroller bumped into a lot of people. Um, but we were on the train last night and Leighton just likes to pick on her brother. It's, it's kind of sad and funny at the same time. Um, but she was hitting him and then Noah, Noah's really sweet, just super calm, smiling all the time. And he just goes, Leighton, we don't hit people. And she roundhouse kicks him in the nose and right in the middle of the train, bloody nose, like screaming and just like out of nowhere, Leighton, we don't hit people, busted nose. So, um, that's our house. If you want to come watch kids, you can, um, but no, they're fun, they're sweet, I love them. If these two are poking holes in the wall, let me know. Um, there's a good chance that'll happen. So, but man, I'm glad to be here. I love this place. Man, I'm just gonna start with that. Man, I love this place. This place has been so life-giving to me, to my family in this season, uh, man, that we've been in, just in transition and moving across the country. And if you don't know, we just came, we're from Tennessee, just came from South Dakota. Um, so, yeah, 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 Tennessee, let's go. Go Vols. Y'all don't get that up here. Um, but, man, it's been, it's been such a good thing to be here for us. And, man, I'm just excited about 2019. Um, I, who's done with Christmas? Who's sick of Christmas already? Yeah, I'm done with it. Get those songs out of here. That annoying radio music, get it out of here. I like the new year. I like new things. I like fresh things. And I believe that today, what we're going to look at today Man, I think it's going to launch us into something for 2019 that's going to shift things for us. It's going to shift what God does here. It's going to shift our pro productivity here, our effectiveness here. Who wants that? Who wants effectiveness, productivity? Yeah. I believe that what we talk about today is going to shift that. And so first, before we do that, let's pray. Father, we love you. And we thank you, man, that we get to come alongside you. And we, you, you call us sons, you call us daughters, we are family, we are children of God. And we thank you for that. And God, I just pray that today, as we, as we open up your word, man, would you give us ears to hear, hearts ready to receive and put in motion what you have for us. And God, we don't want to just break from here and, and, and just hear things and not be doers. We don't want to be hearers of the word and, doer, and not doers of the word. We want to be doers of the word. And so God, we love you. Uh, man, open our eyes. Speak today in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a Bible, um, whether it's on a phone or not, I'm the young guy, so yeah, I'm used to the phone. I have a real one, though. Turn to Matthew 16. 16. There's two verses I want us to, to dig into, but I'm going to start us at verse 13, and I'll read. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say that the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. But you, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And Jesus responded, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my father in heaven. Well, these are the verses I want to look at. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. And on the gates of Hades, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be, have been bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will have been loosed in heaven. Then he gave the disciples orders to tell no one that he was the Messiah. We're not going to talk about that last verse because that one I don't really understand, to be honest. Um, but 28, or, or 18 and 19, I want us to look at that. Let's put 18 up here. I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church. And all the powers of hell will not conquer it. The next one. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you forbid on earth will be forbidden in heaven. Whatever you permit on earth will be permitted in heaven. So let's go real quick to 18. I want today to focus into this word 
church. Because I believe that God wants us to live in everything and walk in everything else, uh, that comes after that word, right? Everything, man, I believe that God wants, has for us in this, in this coming season, I think is coming after that church. But I think we got to understand this word, right? Got to understand that word so that we can walk in, uh, man, the, the, the kingdom ultimately, right? And so this word, uh, the Greek word for this is ekklesia. Who's heard of ekklesia before? Most of you. Yeah, it's a Greek word. And to me, man, this is the hinge point for everything. I love the church. I'm just going to be honest. Like, I grew up in the church. It's, it's what I do. But so often we get off. We get off course. We get off base. And my heart today is that we just look at this for what Jesus intended it to be. Amen? Can we do that? And so I, I think it's awesome that Jesus chose this word, ecclesia. I think we have to understand what it is because Jesus could have said, on this rock, I will build my tabernacle. He could have said, I will build my temple. He could have said, I will build my synagogue. The tabernacle and the temple were both places of worship. It's where people came together, a lot like a building, and just come together and worship, right? The synagogue is where they would do teaching, kind of like Bible study. That's where they would kind of get into the nitty-gritty of things. But he didn't say that. He said the ecclesia. And the ecclesia is something completely different entirely. So the ecclesia, anybody know what it is? No, you're saying that's why you're here. That's exactly what you're supposed to be doing, right? The ecclesia. So it was a Greek thing. It was a Greek kind of concept that they had back, uh, man, in, in Athens. And the Romans actually took it. The Greeks, what they would do, the ecclesia was a group of men over, the eight, uh, over years, eight, 18 years old. And they would meet um, about 50 55, 52 times a year, they would come together. And what they would do is they would vote on things. They would receive information, receive some vision, some clarity on some things from their leaders, from the government. And then they would break. And the thing about this is there was, there was 18,000 of them. 18,000 of them. And if you look at Rome, uh, when Jesus um, was uh, kind of in that his, his day, there was about 6,000 of them. So this is a lot of people, right? So they're going to come and they're going to vote on some things, but then they're going to break. And what their job is when they break is to go and the, the, the vision that they got, the, what they received from those meetings, they would break and they would go and institute, right? They would institute what the, the, the Greek and Roman culture wanted them to institute. And it was kind of their job to see to it that what they saw what the leader saw, that it would happen. So first point, if you're feeling it, if you're taking notes, Jesus chose the ecclesia to continue and carry out his mission. And this is important for us to understand because he could have chosen anything, right? He could have come, honestly, in 2018, 2019, and he could have chosen a political party, right? But he didn't. He could have chosen a king, he could have chosen any other way to institute what he wanted, but yet he chose the ecclesia. And I think we have to understand that because so often we're sitting around looking around, and we are the ecclesia. If you're in this room and you're a follower of Jesus, you're the ecclesia. We just need to know that before we dive any further. You're the ecclesia. And so often we start looking at the problems in the world. We start looking at culture. We start looking at all this stuff, and we start going, who's going to fix that? Right? Who's guilty of that? Come on, me too. If you aren't saying amen, you're lying. Just kidding. But maybe you are. But seriously, it, it, we, we sit and we look at all these things and we go, who's going to fix that? And Jesus put us in place to fix it. He put the ecclesia in place to fix it. And that's who we are. And we've got to understand that. And so point two, I want us to look at this. The ecclesia was put in place to institute heaven's culture, values, and customs on the earth. Heaven. So what they would do is they would come together and they would hear things and they would see things. And that, the important thing is that they're hearing the vision from the leaders. They're hearing the vision from the leaders. And so it's important to us that we know who our leader is. Amen. We know our leader. He's not just a master. He's our father. We get relationship with him, but we have to know him. If we want to know what he wants in the world, if we want to know what he wants in our communities, we have to know him, right? And so this is the thing I want us to look at. Ephesians 4, if you can. Now, these are the gifts that Christ gave to the church. 
the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. Their responsibility is to, to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. This will continue until we all come to such unity in our faith and knowledge of God's Son that we will be mature in the Lord, measuring up to the full and complete standard of Christ. And so there is some structure, right? We've got some structure. Jesus put some structure in place. Because it said, verse 11, that Christ gave the, himself to the church in this way. He gave these gifts to the church. But our job as pastors, this is, this is my job. My job is to equip you. Equip you. My job is that when you come in these doors, and Pastor Randall and Pastor Ken and, and Pastor Frank and Pastor Jeff and, and, and Pastor David, all, these, all of our pastors, our job is to equip you to go. Equip you to be that. But it's also that you know this word. It's our, our job to make sure that you know this, that you know who you are, that you know who, God's, who God says you are, but also that you know what he wants to do in the world what he wants us to be about as Vertical Church, what, he, what his heart beats for. Amen? Amen? And so our job is to come here and to receive this the same way that the Greeks would do that. They would receive it. It's our job to receive his vision, his purpose, his passion, his agenda, right? And then we are the ones that carry it out. And, and I just want us to, to, to say something on this. It's easy to sit and go, hey, man, I'm passionate about this. I'm really passionate about this. Um, I think the church needs to do this. Anybody ever heard that? I think the church needs to do this. Well, what you're technically saying is I need to do this. That's what you really are saying. But what you're saying is, is the organization needs to do this. The organization needs to be passionate about that. And I just think it's backwards. I don't think it's wrong. I just think it's backwards. I think that when you are passionate about that, that's what God's called you to do. That's what God's put in, 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 in your line of sight to chase after. And it's easy. Now, should the church come along and partner? It's our job to equip, right? It's our job to equip. But it's your job to chase it. It's your job to carry it out. It's your job to see to it because that's what God's given you. And so don't put it on the organization when, when it's really on the people. Amen? I know that this may be a little hard, and I don't want to be harsh, but I think that, I think that what is coming if we understand this, far outweighs the harshness of it. Amen? And so we need to understand this, um, that he gave us, but also that, that we could work, to equip you to do the work. The work. Now, I, um, my dad is a construction worker. I am not, obviously, because I wear a guitar every week. So that obviously created some frustration in my family at times because my dad wanted me to carry heavy things and I was like I would rather be writing a song and he just couldn't understand that sometimes um, but but I just I didn't I didn't love that stuff but what I will say is I I didn't grow into a mature person by sitting and just writing songs all day I didn't grow into a mature person by just playing video games I love playing video games my wife hates it when I play video games but I like it and she's wrong Yeah, I need lunch to eat with somebody after this. <laughs> but I, I didn't grow into maturity by playing video games. It was by working. It was by working in, in construction and going, this isn't about me. This isn't about me. This is, somebody else has an agenda that I need to help get them done. I need to, I need to get this done for them, right? And we start to learn and we start to grow and we start to struggle and we start to, man, have to trust some things. And that's how we grow. And, man, I just believe there are a lot of Christians that, that are sitting going, man, I'm a mature Christian because you know a lot. And I just don't believe that that is what grows us into maturity. I think that it's both. I think you have to receive. The only way that we're going to grow is through receiving from him, right? But faith without works is... We have to go to work, right? And so I think we have to understand that, that, man, we, we are here as pastors to help you be who God, man, made you to be. Honestly, like little Holy Spirit kingdom vessels, like the things that you throw in the washing machine that just kind of opens up and does the, does the thing. You know what I mean? That's our job. 
It's to, to equip you, make sure that you've got, you, you are ready to go. That way when we release you into the world, you just unleash the kingdom. You unleash the kingdom. You unleash joy. You unleash peace. You unleash uh, righteousness. Man, it, where chaos was, peace now reigns, right? And we are supposed to bring it. So often we look at things and go, why is that not the way it is? Why, it, why doesn't people just fix it? It's because it's our job. It's our job. We are the extension of the heart of God. We are the extension. In other words, we are the hands and Man, and it's so simple, and we miss it. It's so simple. So it's important that we understand who our leader is, but it's just as important that we understand our role in this, right? It's just as important that we understand our role because when we understand our role, we know what to do with the information. We know what we're supposed to be doing. But if we don't do that, man, we've missed the whole purpose. We've missed what the, the church the ecclesia even is supposed to be about, right? We turn it back into a temple, just a place of worship, and that's not what it's about. It's about the breaking. So this, the next point I want us to look at. The highest priority of the church is not to gather, but to spread. Now, I know that that may rub a little bit because it rubs me. Uh, uh, let me see introverts in here. Yeah, raise them high. I know, I know. I'm calling you out. You don't like it. <laughs> Come on back. I, I, yeah, we, we need it. Man, it's so easy for us to get in our bubble, right? I'm guilty. I'm just going to speak to introverts. You need your you time. You need, I just need, I need to recharge, right? I'm bad about it. The Enneagram and all these like, like things, all these personality tests, I'm like using them as weapons. Like... <laughs> I need a break, you know, like I, I'm, I'm overstimulated, you know, but it's, it's easy for us to, to love the gathering because we get to come in a setting like it, like this, the lights are down, the worship's loud, you get to hear teaching, you get to sneak out the back, go to lunch, you know what I mean? And it's important that we understand that, man, we, the gathering is great. We're going to talk about the gathering in a minute, but the spreading, it's the spreading, it's the, it's the way the Greeks, when they would come and they would hear and they would receive, nothing happened until they broke. It was just an idea. It was just a concept, right? But what they would do is they would break and put it into motion. And they would take the things that they wanted, the policies, the things that they voted on, the things that the leaders wanted, and they turned them into reality, right? And it's the same for us. What happens in here to everyone else is just a concept. Now, to us, it's real, right? Right? We stand in worship. Man, we just sing. Uh, man, I, that song, I never heard it before I came here. It's my favorite song now. It's ridiculous. Um, but but we, we know what it's like to worship. We know what it's like to stand in, in, in worship settings with our brothers and sisters and sing of his promises, sing of who he is. But the people outside, it's just an idea. It's just a concept. And they don't know that this Jesus is active. They don't know that this Jesus is alive, Right? And so what we do, if, if we don't take it to them, it's just an idea in a building. And that is the exact opposite. That's what Jesus came to break. Jesus came to break this idea that God is in a building. He came to say, I mean, you, the woman at the well. Who knows the story of the woman at the well? He came and said, what did he say? The time is coming and is now here, is now here that we will not worship in a building. And we, we won't be talking about places. We'll worship, true worshipers will worship in spirit and truth, right? He broke the idea that we have to be in a place just to worship. And I'm a worship pastor, so I love the gathering. This is what I love. So I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to myself too. But, but we have to understand that, that it's not just in the gathering. It's in the spreading, because in the spreading, let's just be honest. You guys will get someplace and be someplace tomorrow that I will not be in 10 years. I could spend 10, 20 years doing ministry in this city and won't get into the relationships that you have. I won't get into the to workplaces and schools that you guys are in, right? And it's your job. It's your job not to just bring people, and we want to bring people, man. The presence of God is here. We want to, we want to bring people into that. But it's your job to go. And the nature of this whole thing, the nature of this whole concept is to spread and invade and infiltrate culture. 
It gets into the cracks and the crevices of culture, the places that, that, man, just ideas and concepts can't get. You know what I mean? Man, the president could walk in here today and say something, but it's not going to get into the nitty-gritty of your life. And this is our job, is to receive vision, to receive purpose, to receive some specific things from the Lord, and then to work them into culture, to work them into our relationships, our schools, our workplaces, our communities. And the only way we're going to do that is if we understand that this is not the highest priority. Now, worship is. I'm not saying that. Worship is the highest priority. Always has been, always will be. But the gathering even though it's important, is not the most important thing. Amen? And we have to spread. If we don't spread, man, we, we, we have completely missed the entire purpose of Jesus coming. We've completely missed it. We've complete, if, we, if we go back to the old time to where everybody just gathers, we don't even understand what he's doing. And we're off base. We're off base with his heart, his purpose, his plan. Do we want that? No. We want to be in step with him, right? And the way to do that is mission. Man, the church has always been a mission church. The church has always been a justice church. Always. I don't care who says that the church is not. The church of Jesus Christ is a justice church. And so it's our job to seek justice. Seek justice the same way he did. Amen? Man, I want us to look at this story. Um, man, I'm going to turn to it real quick. I don't have it on the screen, so just bear with me. I'm just going to read it for a second. It's Luke 10. It says, After this, the Lord Jesus appointed 72 others, and he sent them ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself was about to go. He told them, The harvest is abundant, but the workers are few. Therefore, pray to the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into his harvest. Now go. I'm sending you out like lambs among wolves. Don't carry a money bag, a traveling bag, or sandals. Don't greet anyone along the road. Whatever house you enter in, first say peace to this household. If a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on him. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking what they offer, for the worker is worthy of his wages. Don't move from the house. Don't move from house to house. When you enter any town and they welcome you, eat the things they set before you. Heal the sick who are there and tell them the kingdom of God has come near to you. It's Luke 10. And I love that. that This is basically the prototype, you know what I mean, of the church. This is before the church is actually set in motion. Jesus hasn't gone to the cross yet. But he kind of does a prototype of the church. And he doesn't send them out in a pack with T-shirts. Right? He doesn't say, here's a pamphlet. Go talk. He says, go in their homes, heal the sick, heal the sick. We just talked about these, these, the gifts of the spirit, man. Who who loved this last series that we had? Let's just give it up, man. Pastor Ken, that dude's got a brain that I will never have. Just being honest. But this is, it's up to us to activate now, right? It's this, it's these things that we hear and we receive and go, okay, we're supposed to walk in this. Now let's go. Now let's go do it, but let's don't do it in this pack mentality like we're all sticking together and we're all just going to have just little worship nights all around. I'm all about that, but that's not how we invade culture. That's not how we get in the cracks and crevices. That's not how we get into relationships that I can't get into, but you can, where there's darkness and all these things. And so we have to understand in the same way that Jesus sent them out two by two, it was so they could invade. It was so that they could infiltrate. Amen. I want us to look at this last point. And this is where I could talk for a long time, but I'll spare you. Worship, when we gather, should propel and power the mission as we break. Like I said, gathering is is important, right? We love this. Like, man, turn to your neighbor and say, this is awesome. Let's just go ahead and do that. Yeah, like this is fun. We get to to talk to people. We get to encourage each other. Um, But it's not the highest priority. The highest priority is what we do with it. Amen? And so when we gather, what should gathering look like? We should equip each other. We should love each other. You should find somebody. Man, the things we were just talking about in the last series about, man, having a word for somebody. Walk through these doors ready. Because to me, as a worship leader, I love you guys, and I will do it until the Lord comes back. 
but I would rather have you guys ready to go than by the third song being like, okay, now we're going. <laughs> now we're going. And then it's like, man, we could have sat in that for a long time. When you're in your car, get ready because you're meeting with God. You're coming together with his people and you get to meet with him and he gets to speak some specific things to you. He gets to speak to you in a new way and in a fresh way. And I, I, there's just something different about worshiping with people. Amen. Like you can worship in your car and that is good. And the Lord's going to speak in those ways. But in this setting, there's just something different. There's a grace that he holds that he releases specifically in these ways. Amen. And so when you come, don't come just going, man, I hope worship's good today. Make it good. Make it good. Step in here, ready to roll. Yeah. Yeah. Come in here with a mindset, with a hunger, with a desire to see God move, to see him speak, to see him do something among us. And look for your brother and your sister. And what can I do to encourage you? Man, do you need $100? You know? Do you need something? How can we help each other? How can we lock arms so that when we walk outside of these doors, we're ready, we're strong, we're ready to step into culture and unleash the kingdom. We're ready to step into culture and unleash peace, right? And we get so caught up in, in, in what songs we're singing and all, the, all this stuff. Was the band good? I couldn't hear the vocals and yada, yada, yada. Man, I, like I, I've led worship for years and I'm telling you, like, the worst sound systems are the best times of worship to me. Like, the times when there's no lights, and I love the lights. Praise God for the lights. But the times with no lights, there's just something special. And all I'm saying that for is it's not about the stuff. It's not about the stuff. It's not about the look. It's not about the, the sound. We want excellence. We want quality. That's what, I mean, it's a value. It's not our master, though. That's what we value. But what I want from us as a, as, a, as a team, as a unit, as a body, as a congregation, as a, as a, as a, as a, a, a little C church, is to be hyper-focused. Hyper-focused that when we walk through these doors, we know what we're here for. We know what we're here for, and we're not just going to sit by and watch, because the Lord can be here and you can miss it. You can completely miss the whole thing. You can, you can completely miss him. You have to be tuned in, focused, locked in, in step with him. Amen? And so 2019, man, why am I saying all this stuff? We're going into this fast, right? We're doing a fast. If you don't know, we're starting January 6th. Is that right? January 6th, 7th. See, I was wrong. The pastors were wrong. January 7th, we're starting a fast, 21 days of fasting and prayer. And, man, I just want to challenge you. I want to challenge you to take it serious. Take it serious. Hunger. After all this stuff will pass. All the stuff that we just got for Christmas, we will be tired of in six months. And we'll still be paying for it. And all the stuff, all the things that we, that we get caught up in, we miss it. We miss it. But the thing that lasts is when we seek. The, the word says when we seek with our whole heart, we will find. And man, I just want us to seek so that when we come here, we know what we're doing. When we step into these walls, we know what we're here for. We're locked and loaded. We're ready to go. And then when we leave, we're ready to go. And we know what we're doing. And maybe you've heard this before, and maybe you're like, man, it didn't work. Try again. Try again. Keep pressing. Because the Lord's going to put us in situations, I believe, in 2019. Because I, 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 I've been here three months. I don't know this city. But I know it needs Jesus. I see that already. I already see that it needs Jesus. And you guys know that more than I do. You guys know, but you know what? Maybe you're saying, how do you know that this will work in our city? You haven't seen our city. You haven't seen our school systems. Well, it's working in Singapore. It's working in Malaysia. It's working in China. It worked in ancient Rome. It worked in Corinth. It will work. It will work. When we come into agreement and in alignment with what God intended, when we do it the way he said to do it, when we approach it, not with our own agenda and putting our own projection on it, when we approach it the way we, uh, man, not just the way we interpret it, when we approach it the way he said so, when we do it the way he said to do it, it will work because his word does not come back void. Amen? And so 2019, I want us to, to, to dig. 
I want us to press in. I want us to not just come into these walls and, and just sit on the sidelines. Be here. Be mentally here. And be, be, that's my challenge is, man, if it takes you to the third song to kind of get, you know, in, in your headspace, figure out a routine. Get a rhythm to where you're on your way here praying, thanking God. Man, thank you for this. Thank you for, for all these different things. Thank you for, for your faithfulness. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for that I have food on the table. Thank you for my family. And get yourself ready to see him, to meet him. Amen? And that's really all I want us to do is just to focus. It's so easy. and We get so distracted. We get so caught up in all these things. And this year, I want us to focus on him. I want us to focus on him and what he wants in this house, not just in this house, but what he wants in this city. Because I'm just going to be honest, I'm a worship pastor. Most worship pastors, man, they, they just love the gathering, right? They love the singing. They love the, uh, and that's, not, that's good. That's good. That's not me. I, I came to this church. I came to this church because I saw a church that was active. I saw a church that was moving. I saw a church that was passionate. It was overwhelming. When we first came and we heard about, man, trips to Honduras and all these mission projects and all these different things and all these classes, all these ways that we're discipling people, I was like, man, I'm in. <laughs> I, that's what I want. I want a church that's moving, going, pushing, changing, striving. You know what I mean? I don't want to just sit because I want to see this city shifted. I don't care what city it is. I want to see a city, a city come into alignment with what God wants. And I'm saying, let it be New Haven. Let it be West Haven. Let it be this area. Let it be the Northeast. But Lord, let it start here. Let it start here by us getting in line with what he wants for us and, 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 and having the audacity to step out Man, just not being afraid, not being afraid of being turned down, but get into the homes the same way we just read that. Get into the homes of people. Get into the, the cracks and crevices. Seek out dark places. Seek it out. I was in New York City last night. It, we're not far. Darkness is all around us, and we have authority over it. We have authority because of what Jesus has done on the cross. We now have authority to walk in those dark places and speak. Speak life. Speak peace. Speak joy. And all we have to do is do it. All we have to do is do it. And man, you may be scared. Maybe you're thinking like, well, you don't know me. I'm not a good speaker. I'm not a good speaker. Maybe you're saying, are you obviously the one with the microphone? I'm not, I'm not a speaker. It's not what I do. So you get up and you speak. You get into these, these places where you get uncomfortable. And God stretches you and says, you can't do it in your own strength this time. You can't do it in your own understanding. And you have to step out and say something. Man, the Lord gave me a picture. And I'm going to, man, does this make any sense to you? Can I just pray for you? And, and, and this is going to be weird, but can I just pray for you? And then the Lord, through those moments, he breaks things off of people. Man, years of lies and bondage and chains that the enemy has put on this person are broken in an instant. But 2019 is waiting on you to do it. Man, Jesus could walk down tomorrow and break everything. But he chose to do it through the ecclesia. And if we can go back to the title of the message. Man, this is why I know y'all were like, who's this joker up here telling me to get to work? He's been here three months. Yeah, I know. That's why there's quotations. Because I'm not that, yeah, I'm not that confident. Y'all can beat me up. But as we get to work, we get to work with the Lord. We get to come alongside him and see his mission, his purpose, his passion, his vision, what he came to do. What Jesus, 2,000 years ago, came and, and bought on a cross. He now partners with us. And says, let's work. Let's go. And we get, to, we get to receive through it too. So it's not just about the working, but we get to work and then we get to receive and work. And it's this beautiful cycle where we're just growing. And we're more and more in love with him. And we're more and more, man, in an intimate relationship with him. We know him more and we love him more. And he loves us. And, and we learn that more. And it's this, this cycle. But we have to understand that working is a part of the process. Being the church. 
and not just coming and, and, and being a church, but be the one that Jesus put in motion. Be the ecclesia. Cool? Man, love you guys. Yeah. Let's go ahead. Man, every, every head bowed, every eye closed.